hard. Oh, it's five inch. That one's your your sand seven RP. There is a diagram. If it's specced out for 700, there is a diagram to show you how to get 700. But they're probably going to recommend that lay flat bows. They're probably going to recommend some other things. Usually, in my experience, when they when they tell you a number, you can always figure about 200 feet less of what they tell you. You know, that's that's true. Like a like a thousand foot hose bed, 800 usually. Just the way. It's, Usually a quiz. Okay. In the back of your truck here, you will notice these are very similar to each other, but they're not exactly the same. Okay. This is where I program this truck. That's what I have here. This is a global override switch. If I hold this switch, it's taking away all the programming I put into your truck. Okay. This switch and this switch are exactly the same. So it does not care which one I hold, it's doing the same thing. Emergency hydraulics. If I lose my hydraulics but I still have electricity, I can hold this and pack my truck up to get it out of there with that small backup motor that I can run for 30 minutes with a 30 minute cool down time. If I'm holding this, I want to make sure I go up to the cab to shut off my aerial PTO. Reason being is your main hydraulics runs at 3,350 pounds of pressure. This runs at 2,500. The big one's going to win. You will burn up the small pump by running both of them together. Level assist. This, in my opinion, this switch should be here. This switch should be up here. Because when you set up a truck, you do not hold this switch at all. You would think you would, because if I'm looking at it and I want to set up my stabilizer, I would think that's natural. But no, you never hold that one. Okay? So at least they could have numbered for you, right? One, you run it out. Two, you lower it. Okay? Three, you hold this one. This is just for after the fact if you need to make adjustments. Or when you're putting it away. This one must come up first when you put it away. In what situation do you make an adjustment after the auto level that it's in? Not so much here, but like I just came from Asheville, North Carolina, it's all mountains. So their truck, same truck, they get on a hill that's 12 degrees. They get and they reposition the truck and it only brings them to here to operate it. But they can still go a little more, get it in the green. Um, they can make that adjustment afterwards. Or if they need to tilt their truck at a certain angle. Let the truck set itself up and make your adjustments afterwards. Alright. All right. This switch over here is the kill switch. Remember, this is the one that that little bugger is going to hit. And he's going to leave you dead in the water. You must the direction of the arrows to get it to operate again. We'll go over right, same as over there. Emergency hydraulics, same as over there. Level assist, same as over there. I only need to run one side. I don't need to go to both sides to use those switches. All right, does that make sense? So I run that stabilizer out. I run it down until the truck stops me. I run this stabilizer out, I run it down until the truck stops me. Then I go to either one of the panels and I hold the level assist switch. That's all I do. I don't touch this one until I'm ready to pack it up or make an adjustment to it. That is confusing if you're looking at it, though I get that. From a firefighter standpoint, I think that's the dumbest design in the world. I didn't design it. I just have to teach it. <laughs> so. I get it, I understand that. It doesn't make sense. These are your global overrides for your hydraulics. So if you should lose electricity and you need to pack this truck up, this is like pulling the handle of a log splitter. If you don't know what a log splitter is, it splits logs. You pull the handle, it moves. That's what you tell it to do, right? 
So if I'm pulling a handle here, it's going to move. Nothing is going to stop it. So if I'm rotating the ladder and it's at a low angle, and I'm coming in from the side, it's going to continue and it's going to hit the side of the truck because there's nothing stopping it. You're telling it it's okay to do that. You're giving it the fluid to do what it's supposed to do. The program is not going to stop it because this doesn't go through the computer. This is just pure hydraulics. Okay. So when you're in here, remember, you can wreck stuff. There's nothing going to save you. Okay. To make it worse, these are all your stabilizer controls. <laughs> these are your aerial controls. So they give you the running of the aerial down here where you can't see anything. They do require somebody to be up on top though and holding a switch to make this work. But <laughs> still, I don't know. Not, not the best design in the world. Okay. You do have one greaser in here. That'd be for you. That greaser is for the inner bearing. There's that great big tooth bearing up there. It's an 80 ton bearing. It'll support 80 tons of weight. Grease the outside of it with that black molly, get on your clothes, never get out grease, right? Grease the inside, two tubes of grease every six months. You lead somebody up there rotating the ladder as you pump grease in here until it comes out the wiper seal on the big bearing. You use that, white with them or? No, or that, black, that black molly okay. again, yeah. Okay. There is now a port to check the hydraulic oil and pressure here. We didn't used to have that, we've added that. These red caps, if I were you, I would cut these loops right off. Every service call I've ever been on where the ladder stopped moving has been, this gets wrapped around this. And it will do that on its own. You'll be riding down the road, and all of a sudden that thing will wrap around there and this lever won't move anymore. So, Either tie them up with a with a tie wrap or cut them off totally. Because they're gonna cause you problems. You'll be up in your bucket trying to retract and it won't do anything because this handle's down there and it's trapped. You can't move. Okay. This is your emergency hydraulics. Yeah. So when you're up there, these still move, but because of the electronic impulse. So these valves are always in Always moving, okay. yep. When I, even when I run the stabilizers, I run this out, that lever will move. Okay, okay. This is just electric <clears throat> over hydraulic. That valve moves. The only thing that's different between the two of them is this signal passes through the computer and it says, hey, if my stabilizer is on the ground, this one will not let that lever move. But if I grab the lever, it'll move. Bravo, okay. It'll go with that. Time? It's 20 till, whenever you want to break. Whenever you guys want to break, whatever you're normally Are you at a stopping point now before you go to the other side, or you yeah, I don't want to mess up your flow? Yeah, we're at a stopping point. Okay. Pretty good. All right, we can do that. Yeah. And then uh, 